In the Hebrew Bible, God promised to send a future deliverer for the Jewish people. This chosen or anointed one is called the Messiah. God made these promises through prophets who predicted the Messiah's lineage, birthplace, lifestyle, and even the time frame of his life, death, and resurrection. Yitzhak Kaduri born 1898 to the 28th of January 2006, was a renowned Mizrahi Haredi rabbi and Kabbalist who devoted his life to Torah study and prayer on behalf of the Jewish people. He taught and practiced the Kavanot of the Rishosh. His blessings and amulets were also widely sought to cure people of illnesses and infertility in his life. He published no religious articles or books at the time of his death. Estimates of his age range from 103 to 108, and his birth year is still disputed. His funeral, which was held in Jerusalem, drew over half a million followers in what was described as the largest funeral in Israel's history. Kaduri was born in Baghdad, which was then part of the Ottoman Empire. His father, Rabbi Kaduri Daiba Benaziza, was a spice trader as a youngster. Kaduri excelled in his studies and began learning Kabbalah while still in his teens. He was a child student of Rabbi Yosef Hayam and studied at the Zilka Yeshiva in Baghdad. He moved to the British Mandate of Palestine in 1923 and there changed his name from Daiba to Kaduri. His rise to fame, though, began when his son, Rabbi David Kaduri, who ran a poultry store in the Bokharim market, decided to found a proper yeshiva organization under his father, called Natchalot Yitzhak Yeshiva. It was located adjacent to the family home in the Bukharim, neighborhood of Jerusalem. Kaduri's followers believed that he was able to predict events. In late 2004, Kaduri said great tragedies in the world are foreseen, two weeks before the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami. Reporter Baruch Gordon of Eretz Sheva connected the two by saying Kaduri predicted the tragedy. In January 2006, Rabbi Kaduri was hospitalized with pneumonia in the Bika Holim Hospital in Jerusalem. He died at around 10 p.m. January 28th. 2006 29 5766. He was alert and lucid until his last day. An estimated 500,000 people took part in his funeral procession on January 29th, which started from the Nachalot Yitzhak Yeshiva and wound its way through the streets of Jerusalem to the Givit Shul Cemetery, also known as Har Haminachit, near the entrance to the city of Jerusalem. They say the hardest thing for a Jew to do is to embrace Jesus as his or her Messiah. That's understandable. For nearly 2,000 years, Jews have been persecuted, often by those claiming to be followers of Jesus. Since the first followers of Jesus were all Jews, the resentment has a long and tragic history. It stands to reason that if it is difficult for a Jew to embrace Jesus, it's even more difficult for a rabbi to do so. And that begs the question of how difficult it would be for the most revered rabbi in all of Israel to proclaim that the name of the Messiah is Yehoshua, the Hebrew version of Jesus. In a meeting in 1990 with Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, the Reba of Lubavitch, many words of blessing were spoken to Kaduri. Among the words spoken by the Lubavitcher Reba was the blessing that Kaduri would not pass from this world until he met the Messiah. This came to pass in a mystical. Among the words spoken by the Lubavitcher Reba was the blessing that Kaduri would not pass from this world until he met the Messiah. This came to pass in a mystical vision on 9 Cheshvin. 5764 the 4th of November 2003 when Kaduri spoke with the Messiah. During this encounter, the Messiah revealed his name to Kaduri. Kaduri later noted to his disciples that the revealed name of the Messiah was hidden among his writings. Kaduri later told his son Rabbi David Kaduri that this note must not be opened until one year later 
after his death. Three years ago, Israel Today ran this amazing headline story. Rabbi reveals the name of the Messiah. Rabbi Itzhak Kaduri was famously known for his memorization of the Bible, the Talmud, and other Jewish writings. He was a teacher and a revered master at Nahalat Yitzhak Yeshiva Seminary. He knew Jewish sages and celebrities of the last century and rabbis who lived in the Holy Land who kept the faith alive before the state of Israel was even born. Kaduri was not only highly esteemed because of his age of 108, but he was charismatic and wise. Chief rabbis looked up to him as a righteous man. Thousands visited him to ask for counsel or healing. His followers speak of many miracles, and his students say that he was a prophet of many disasters. A few months before Kaduri died at the age of 108, he surprised his followers when he told them that he had personally met the Messiah. The Messiah had appeared to him. He wrote the name of the Messiah in a note, he said. His official website had mentioned the Messiah note. David Kaduri, the rabbi's 80-year-old son, confirmed that in his last year, his father had talked and dreamed almost exclusively about the Messiah and his coming. My father has met the Messiah in a vision, he said, and he told us that he was coming very soon. Kaduri gave a message in his synagogue on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, teaching how to recognize the Messiah. He also mentioned that the Messiah would appear to Israel after Ariel Sharon passed. When Kaduri died, January the 28th, 2006, more than 200,000 people joined the funeral procession on the streets of Jerusalem to pay their respects as he was taken to his final resting place. Shortly before he died, this teacher of Israel wrote the name of the Messiah on a small note which he requested would remain sealed for one year. One year later, the note was opened in 2007. When the note was opened, it read as follows. Concerning the letter abbreviation of the Messiah's name, he will lift the people and prove that his word and law are valid. The Hebrew sentence with the hidden name of the Messiah reads like this. Yorim Ham Veokyek Shedvaro Vetoto Omdum. The acronym of that sentence, that is the letter abbreviation that Kaduri spoke of, or the first initials of each word, spell the Hebrew name of Jesus, or Yehoshua, or Yeshua. Kaduri's disciples came across a note written by Kaduri in which was encrypted the name of the Messiah. This note contained instructions saying that it was not to be opened until a year after Kaduri's passing. After a year passed, Kaduri's disciples opened the notes and discovered the name that the Messiah had revealed to Kaduri. Yehoshua the Hebrew form of the Aramaic Yeshua. Here is an English translation of the note, done by an Orthodox rabbi, regarding the acronym of Messiah. The masses will themselves arise and verify that his words and his teachings can stand. With my signature in the month of mercy ill alter edit, 5765 Yitzhak Kaduri, the initial Hebrew letters of the phrase. The masses will themselves arise and verify that his words and his teachings can stand spell out Yehoshua, although some deem the note a forgery. Others stated that it was indeed written by Kaduri. Most of the controversy surrounding the note revolved around the revealed name that of the Master Yeshua. Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri passed on 29th 5766 the 26th of January 2006 at the age of 108. His funeral procession was one of the largest in attendance in the modern history of Israel. His Yazid the anniversary of his death this year begins on the evening of January 26, 2006. The Jewish people have longed for the Messiah for over 2,000 years, and especially since the destruction of the Temple. They've longed for someone to deliver them, and the more calamity, the greater the longing. Yeshua, or Jesus, said that, you know, you, you don't receive me, you'll receive others. And the fact is, in Jewish history, since the time of Jesus, there have been about 40 ma major, in some way, false messiahs who have come, who have been embraced in one form or 
or another by rabbis and by segments of the Jewish people. Uh, there was actually a very famous figure, Bar Kokhba, who is a, known as a hero in Jewish history, but he was a false messiah. He, wa he was hailed as a messiah and he led, to, he led the Jewish people to really destruction. You had another very famous false messiah who was called Shabbat Zevi. And this was in the 17th century and Jewish people all over Europe and rabbis hailed him as the messiah and they expected him to bring peace. And the problem was he ended up being arrested by the Sultan uh, of Turkey who gave him a choice to either convert to Islam or be killed and so he converted. Yet according to the Bible there, there are exact requirements of the messiah and again only one fulfilled that. And according to Daniel the messiah had to come before, before the destruction of the temple. The temple was destroyed in 70 AD. So whoever the messiah is, the messiah of the Jewish people, the Jewish messiah, he had to have come before the year 70 AD. And again there's only one in human history who's even known around the world. Even his name means the messiah. His first name Yeshua means salvation. Last name means messiah. Who, who uh, the entire world has centered on, our entire date system has divided over, and he just happens to be Jewish, and he just happened to have fulfilled all the prophecies of the dying Messiah of the Hebrew Scriptures, and that happens to be Yeshua, Jesus. So the Jews, even of Jesus' day, were, were feeling around the edges to see if he truly was the Messiah. But their understanding of Messiah has more to do with a nationalistic Messiah, a, a, a ruling and reigning king who would, who would uh, nationalize Israel and firm its, its strength and its borders and its foundations and, and, and establish it as the nation of God, the ruling and reigning nation of God from where God's throne is located. Many people uh, believe that that's why Jews Judas got so bumfuzzled and wound up selling out Jesus and the disciples because he was fully expecting this this Jesus from Nazareth to be this this uh, this nationalistic figure. Uh, we see in the New Testament scriptures uh, uh, a couple of brothers, John and James, and, and the mother uh, that that wants to know, uh, you know, when you come into your kingdom, can my can my boys rule and reign at your at your right, one at your left, and one at your right? They thought that he was going to ascend some type of a Rome, become the king of the Jews, if you will, the king of Israel, reestablish Israel, throw off their Roman shackles and the bondage of this huge Roman empire and become the mighty superpower of the world and finally this messianic nation that they had so longed for and so uh, long waited for. the Jews are expecting um, uh, two messiahs. This is a little confusing to a lot of uh, Christians, but uh, it's long been taught in Judaism that they are expecting Messiah ben Joseph. The word ben, of course, means son of. Messiah, son of Joseph, who is a more of a nationalistic figure, a, a, a great military leader, a great ruling kind of political figure. Messiah ben Joseph. Very interestingly, Jewish tradition teaches that Messiah ben Joseph would eventually be um, uh, betrayed and rejected by his own people, that he would eventually be killed, and that when the second Messiah, Messiah uh, ben David, arrives, who is the ultimate Messiah, he would resurrect ben, uh, Messiah ben Joseph. He would cause him to be resurrected. Yeshua himself said he was the Jewish Messiah. The New Testament records several times when Yeshua made that claim. But one of the most remarkable is when a woman said to him, I know the Messiah is coming the one who is called the Anointed One. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Yeshua told her, I am the Messiah. John 4, 25-26 While many leaders throughout history have claimed to be the Messiah, Yeshua is the only person who ever matched the messianic expectations of the Hebrew scriptures. At the time that Yeshua lived, the common people were expecting the Messiah to be a grand military conqueror, with the power of God on his side, so that he might overthrow Israel's enemies and establish political peace. But the kind of peace won by the sword is always temporary. The type of peace Yeshua came to bring was a lasting peace between God and his people. 
in stark contrast to all the rulers of the world who maintain peace through military might. The true chosen one refused to raise an army against his enemies. Instead, he gave his life in order to reunite us with our Creator. Yeshua told his followers that he did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Matthew 20:28. 20, Yeshua brings hope, joy, and purpose into people's lives because he provides peace and restoration with God. His Jewish followers first recognized him as their Messiah over 2,000 years ago. And people from all corners of the world still follow Yeshua as their chosen one today. The Jews are expecting uh, uh, two messiahs. This is a little confusing to a lot of uh, Christians, but uh, it's long been taught in Judaism that they are expecting Messiah ben Joseph. The word ben, of course, means son of. Messiah, son of Joseph, who is a more of a nationalistic figure, a, a, a great military leader, a great ruling kind of political figure. Messiah ben Joseph, very interestingly, Jewish tradition teaches that Messiah ben Joseph would eventually be um, uh, betrayed and rejected by his own people, that he would eventually be killed, and that when the second Messiah, Mes Messiah uh, ben David, arrives, who is the ultimate Messiah, he would resurrect ben, uh, Messiah ben Joseph. He would cause him to be resurrected. When the Messiah came the first time, he came lowly and riding upon an ass. This is what the Talmud teaches in Sanhedrin.98 a. See triumphant entry. When he comes the second time, he will rule as king of kings.